what do you expect out of the BYU offense on Saturday against West Virginia? That is our Twitter question today, and that is the first question we will pose to our ESPN college football friend, analyst, insider, and national champion Trevor Maddich, who joins us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Trevor, what do you expect from the BYU offense against West Virginia? Well, what do I hope or what do I, what do I expect? I, yes. I hope that they'll score more than 20 points because they haven't done it yet this year. Uh, I expect that they will struggle to score more than 20 points unless the defense contributes to it. Where is the biggest issue on the BYU offense currently? Well, let me count the ways. Um, first of all, where, where they're really struggling uh, is on the offensive line and, and tight end. They played this last game without three of their uh, intended starters from preseason, and that's tough, especially when you're in the first year of recruiting to a new offensive style. You don't necessarily have the depth and maturity of, of offensive linemen that you can go down that have been recruited and developed to play this kind of a style. So it makes it harder. Tight end, they, they really don't have that guy that, that can go out and be a threat to defenses at that position right now. That's something else they have to recruit, and that's something that will take time. But the thing that frustrates me the most is the fact that the quarterback and receivers are not – efficient at taking what's there you see from the quarterback position Taysom Hill is not hitting receivers that are open too often and receivers look to me like they if you were to try to to convict in a court of law this wide receiver core is a group not every individual but as a group convict them of being hungry for that football and fighting for it I don't think you'd find enough evidence to convince a jury beyond a reasonable doubt you tweeted on uh, Saturday night, the BYU offense is playing on a field 53.3 yards wide and six yards long. Uh, yep. What did you mean by that? Well, what I meant was that everything on, in the passing game, it seems like is happening uh, close to the line of scrimmage. Part of the reason for that is that they don't have confidence that they can protect the pocket, and so you've got to get rid of that football. Part of the reason is I think they don't have confidence that the receivers can go downfield and make a play or the quarterback can throw the ball to the receiver down there. The farther downfield you throw the ball, the more anticipation you need because that ball's got to be in the air long before the receiver is ready to catch it. And that requires that the quarterback not just sees an open guy and then decides to throw it, but rather anticipates where the open spot will be and throw it there, trusting that the receiver will get there at the right time when the ball arrives. None of those things are happening right now, at least not with any consistency. And so that's part of the reason that, that this passing game is so frustrating. Even with tall, fast receivers, most of the plays are happening closer to the line, and defenses know that. They come up, they crowd that space, they crowd the running game, they crowd the short passing game, and you, you just don't see the BYU offense have the ability to make defenses suffer and pay when they cheat up to the line by throwing it over their heads and burning them deep. The controllable is what BYU can do. Then there's the other side of this. This schedule has been, been tough, and it will continue to be tough all the way uh, through the end of October and into early November uh, at Cincinnati. What role has the opponent, have the opponents played in all of this for the BYU offense? Not much. Truthfully, not much. The, certainly Utah has got a fantastic defense. Give them credit. UCLA has got, has got a very good defense. Give them credit as well. But I don't look at, at what the defense stops. I look at what the defense gives you, and do you take that? You have to start there. Then you try to take things from the defense, and that's a matter of you being good. That's a matter of you being better than they are. But, but again, this is the frustrating part, that there are opportunities that, that BYU's offense just is not taking advantage of. And those are exclusively in the passing game. The running game won't take off under these circumstances unless the passing game opens up the defense for them. So I, I'm, not, I'm not dogging the running game right now. I'm dogging the passing game. And, again, I look at Taysom, and he's tremendously talented. But in this offense, you're required to get that ball out to the spot where the defense will give you. That's why this offense works because there's more options for the quarterback to choose from. And there's always a place where the defense is weak. You need to know what that spot is and get the ball there. We don't see that enough on rhythm from Taysom Hill right now. Quarterback play is the easy target because he touches the ball on every play. You've mentioned the offensive line. We saw receivers having a very difficult time getting separation on Saturday night. 
and miscommunications just flat out in the offense. How much more patient should BYU coaches be with a new offense that's producing 17 points a game? They need to stay patient. This offense will work. This offense does work. Stanford runs a similar offense. Michigan State runs a similar offense. Alabama, the core of Alabama's offense is very similar to this. Uh, LSU, same way. And We saw what happened with LSU the last couple of weeks when they got more efficiency from the quarterback position just in taking what's there. All of a sudden, the offense started to take off. And so the patience with the offense is necessary. You don't just have three games that are frustrating in a new system and then start flipping around to different systems. You know, you need to believe in what you're doing. And as long as you do what you're doing well, it will work. So I don't think there's any rush to make any changes. I don't think there's any rush to be critical of the offensive coaching staff because I think they're doing the best they can with what they've got, and they're just not getting the production out of the players right now. And right now I think it's more on the players than it is on the coaches. Although part of it, too, in fairness, is that the players are also learning a new system. And in fairness to Taysom Hill, he's getting a lot of passes dropped by receivers that that would be plays that would keep the chains moving. And that offensive line just isn't protecting him, and I think most of that is because of injury. But uh, they're not protecting him, so I'm not putting this all on the quarterback either. All I'm saying is that there are times when when quarterbacks and quarterback and the receivers – have opportunities that they need to take advantage of that are there to be taken advantage of, and they're missing too many of those. Trevor, what kind of uh, ha- what would have to happen to have a serious conversation about a switch at quarterback? Well, maybe go one and two in your first two games and not score 20 points uh, in any of those games uh, of offensive production. Um, you know, I think that uh, it's a hard thing to think about because BYU – is loyal to their quarterbacks. I know that, that the team loves Taysom Hill. This is not all Taysom's fault by any, by any stretch. Uh, he's actually doing some things that are keeping them alive on drives. And so he, he's, he's not someone that you want to point the finger to and say, there's the problem. But the, the flip side of that is you can't replace the offensive line and all the receivers. You just can't do it. So it's easier and makes more sense if you think a spark needs to be added to make the change at the quarterback position to see if that spark is the difference. Now, it might not be. Maybe nothing will change. But something's got to change. And sometimes something different at quarterback is the one thing that makes the difference. I think if, uh, if BYU's offense struggles early against West Virginia, I think that the coaching staff would owe it to the rest of the team to see if Tanner Mangum can be that spark. Not that Taysom Hill couldn't. But if he's not providing it for whatever reason, then I think the coaching staff has an obligation to the other guys that are working so hard to try something else to see if it works. And if it doesn't, go right back to Taysom. Trevor Maddich of ESPN with us. Maybe we're splitting, splitting hairs here, Trevor, but over the summer, Ty Detmer referenced that Norm Chow and a couple of other guys that have been in high-profile offensive coordinator positions told him to throw the ball to the running backs to help the quarterback beat the blitz in a pro-style offense. Is it that simple to try and help BYU get something going consistent and positive? Well, that's one of the things that you can do. That's one of the adjustments because if the offensive line is not able to create holes for the running backs, you still got to get production out of the running backs, especially when you've got a guy like a Jamal Williams that when he gets the ball in his hands, he can do things. And so if you can't get into free space by running the ball and blasting your way through, plan B is to throw the ball to him. And so Jamal Williams had two catches for 45 yards in this game, and I would see them having that adjustment. I thought they should have made that adjustment more at halftime and start to throw the ball a lot to Jamal Williams. But I expect them with their self-scouting to see that as, a, if not a plan A, then certainly a, a quick trigger plan B when they face West Virginia. We've discussed the bad news uh, the entire conversation till now. Let's talk about the good news. The BYU defense has been playing really, really well. What are you seeing from that side of the ball? Well, what I see is violence. I see discipline. I see hunger. And I see effectiveness. I see a defense that requires offenses to beat them rather than make mistakes and give up easy plays to the offense. That happens once in a while. But what I see, what I see overall is a defense that, that's in the tradition of a Michigan State defense, of a Stanford defense, a defense that is in the right place doing the right thing with the right technique. And if the offense is going to make a play, they have to defeat a BYU Cougar that's in the right spot 
playing good football. And that way you have to be better than them in order to beat them. And I think that that's one of the reasons you're seeing so much good play from BYU's defense. They're, they're fundamentally sound. And then on top of that, if you were to, to convict them in a court of law of being hungry, of playing with urgency, it would take the jury three minutes to find all the evidence you'd need to convict beyond a reasonable doubt the BYU defense of playing with great fire and great intensity, something that I don't see from, for example, the wide receiver position group. Butch Powell had 19 tackles, 11 solo. He leads BYU's defense in tackles with 37 overall. What impresses you most about Butch Powell? He anticipates well. He understands what's happening in front of him, and he hits it fast. That's one of the ways that, that a good athlete can play great football. When on defense, you, you pre-snap, have an idea of what the offense might do. And then after the snap, when you see the play begin, it confirms what you thought pre-snap, and then you fire, you attack right now. That's one of the things that he's been doing, and it's one of the reasons he's all over the field making plays. Trevor, great stuff. Uh, interested to see what BYU does against West Virginia this week, and that's probably a severe understatement between, from me and all of BYU Sports Nation. We appreciate you bringing it, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. And I, I feel bad about so much uh, – uh, negative stuff about the offense. I'm, I'm, I think I have an obligation to you all to call it like I see it. And what I see is guys, for the most part, working hard and trying hard. Uh, but I, I see some things that, that need to be shaken up a little bit in order to get this thing going the way it needs to go. So, so I, I, you know, I'll always tell you the truth. I hope that there's better, better news and better analysis next week. Yeah, we appreciate that very much. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks, guys. Trevor Maddich on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future.